Oh, good coffee. From After Dark World Headquarters. Good morning. This is your favorite correspondent, KD. For Mr. and Ms. America. For all ships at sea. For all sods. Everywhere. Welcome to your morning report. I want to give a big shout out to Brother Jeff Clayton for uh, allowing me to be on his show, Break On Through. It was great. And many thanks for the, all the new subscribers. You guys hang in there with me. 53 now. Hopefully more. I had a good mail day. Janice Blythe sent me my stickers. Now, you need to get in on this. The Hills Have Eyes, Ruby. And not only that, you get three stickers, but also the hand address envelope. And check this out. Janice gives just a little bit of a smooch on the back of the envelope. It is groovy. I can highly recommend Ruby stickers from Janice Blythe. Go to Annie Scene. Dot com and they will guide you in the right direction. We should continue with the readings this morning. Getting a lot of requests for wondering what's going to happen to Karen, the woman who wants to seduce everybody. And so if you've been following the story, they just interviewed her mother. So, he's starting to think about Karen a little bit. Speaking to Dr. Geller, Dr. Crichton says, I think I'm a little attracted to her if you want to know the truth. Really? Says Dr. Geller. Yeah, I'm a little preoccupied with her and so on. Dreams? Sometimes. Sexual dreams? Sometimes. I imagined I would too. She was pretty damn attractive. And she's bright, you say. You like her intelligence. Yes, she's bright. Nice body, nice young girl, nice legs and so on. Yes. So it's natural to be attracted. The thing is, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Perhaps you would want to talk to her about your feelings. Why would I do that? She's the patient. That's true, Dr. Geller said. There was a long silence. He waited. I knew from past experience he could wait a long time. But what, I said. But if she's behaving seductively towards you, perhaps you could discuss her behavior and how it is making you feel. If you brought it to her awareness, she would have a chance to change it. Maybe she wouldn't. Dr. Geller how would you know? I felt suddenly confused. I don't think that's a good idea, discussing my feelings. Merely a suggestion, he said. Karen was cheerful and evasive about her weekend off. She had seen some friends. She had gone to some parties. I felt irritable. Why, she said, does it matter? To what? to your research paper about me or whatever you're doing. Who told you I'm doing a research paper? Ellen told Margie that all the students are doing research papers. Margie was the depressed woman who had been seduced by her doctor. What are you going to write about me, Karen says. We will continue tomorrow with the girl who seduced everybody. Her name's Karen. She's a damn doozy. Michael Crichton's Tribals, I can highly recommend it. However, this one, although the cover has promise, I'm going to start telling Gene Tracy jokes if this don't pick up. The name of this <clears throat> joke is The Impotent Husband. Remember, this is humor. A couple had stayed married for 20 years, but each time they had sex, the husband insisted 
he wanted the lights turned off. Having lived with the man for 20 years, the wife found this habit rather absurd. She decided in her heart that she was going to make him snap out of this foolishness. Therefore, in the middle of a wild, steamy, romantic session, she switched the lights on. Looking down, she came face to face with a battery-powered leisure device her husband was holding. The vibrator was well disguised. It was large. It was soft, larger, and more wonderful than others on the market. Realizing that her husband had made a fool out of her, she went ballistic. You impotent bastard! How could you lie to me all these years? Explain yourself! The husband remained calm and looked at her straight in the eye. All right. I'll explain the vibrator. You explain the children. I really don't have anything to say about that. Other than that, I'm going to start doing Gene Tracy jokes. So my reaction to that is, damn, that's humor. The wonderful Xavier Hollander. I haven't found any more hate letters, although the hate letters are the best. However, she gets a letter from a young sod. There she is. Dear Miss Hollander, I've just read your second book and it was fantastic. I also read the first one, but to be truthful, I like this one better. The first one covered your whole life up to a certain point and then you seemed to live just an exciting a life in less than a year. I guess that's why I like the second one so much. I knew how exciting someone's life could be. Both books taught me a lot but I'll bet everyone tells you that. But being 15 and without any girlfriends, I realize I don't know very much. Now that I've learned a lot, I wish I had someone to try it out on. Well, that's how it goes. Yours truly, name withheld, Jasper, Indiana. Letters to the Happy Hooker. National Goofball Month has now begun. It's December 1st. A chilly Wednesday morning, cold and dark. So let's get shit done. Consequential shit. You know, the frivolous shit. Reserve that for other times. Right now, get your consequential shit done. Always be nice. Until it's time not to be nice. Be kind to animals. Discipline equals freedom. Never complain and never explain. You don't have time for that. Let's get shit done. So for Mr. and Ms. America, for all ships at sea, and for all sods everywhere, this is your favorite correspondent, KD. Thanking you for subscribing. I got about 10 new subscribers in the last 24 hours. That's great. I thank you very much. Stay with me. The ride gets more exciting as we go along. I want to see you all getting shit done. You don't have to fly out of bed. You don't have to leap out of bed, crawl out of bed if you have to, get a cup of coffee. Yeah, I know it's a cool cup. And get shit done. I will see you on the road to adventure. And if I do see you, come up and say hello. Have a great day, everyone.